All right, um, I'd like to introduce the first speaker, which is me. <laughs> I didn't actually think about that ahead of time, I might need somebody to introduce myself, so I'll just introduce myself. Um, I'm Susan Crumduck, and um, I moved to New Zealand 10 years ago. Um, I've studied mechanical and aerospace engineering, you focus on energy engineering, and then for a PhD during a time when um, oil was $13 a barrel and there wasn't any research in energy, I worked on advanced materials. <laughs> as you do. Um, but uh, I think that makes me characteristic of a lot of people, that, that a lot of us, I have found, in, in, especially in the speakers that I've, I've um, had come forward, a lot of us have a day job. A lot of us have a thing that we do professionally that we're quite good at. Um, and we have this other work that we do that we believe in, something that, that drives us to do it. And, and that's all right. I think that's... Um, that's just fine, <laughs> and um, that, that's me as well. I've got uh, my, my sort of um, uh, academic work, working on, on material science and things like that, and then I've got this, this other dream that I have, that engineering can really contribute to sustainability, to doing things right, and that's what a lot of my PhD students are working on. Okay, well, well how, would, how would engineers actually do that? All right, so my keynote address, um, is meant to be an encompassing vision of the whole two days and of all of the speakers um, and of all of the topics and of a lot of ideas. And the, um, the topic, change or become irrelevant, <laughs> where does that come from? Well, the pictures I've put up there of a, um, a, a uh, tree cutter, you know, there, there was a time, if you think a hundred years ago, when there were a lot of people following a vision, and that vision was to mill this country. It really was, we were going to, it was something that needed to be done, it was necessary, there was this, this awful bush stuff all over the place, and, and if you could mill that stuff into something productive, and then get that into pasture, then, that, you know, that was a vision, that was a shared cultural vision, to make this place productive, to make it useful. And at some point, there was a heretic or two, there was somebody who didn't really share that vision and they probably wouldn't have been able to do the economic analysis of why they didn't share that vision, why you ought to leave up the odd cowrie standing, but somewhere inside they knew that, that that's what they wanted to happen. And there were enough of those people who actually did something about it, who, who stood in front of the logging trucks, and uh, there's a great book out about this now, and that was not an easy thing to do at that time. You were, you were going to get derision heaped on you as an anti-progress anti person, trying to stand in the way of progress, trying to put people out of work. You know, what do you mean? We, we have to mill it. <laughs> but they didn't. And if we look back 100 years ago, um, that was an important decision and it was an important action. And right now, I think that somebody would not be looked upon kindly if they decided to cut down a cowrie tree and mill it. You know, I know that there, there isn't a whole lot left, it's mostly remnants, but, but, um, but it did happen that somebody broke with the herd and, and changed history. And what does that mean about the people who at the time were the majority opinion and said, you know, no, we, this is progress, we have to mill the forest. Well, their point of view now is irrelevant. And that's an interesting thing when, when, when you are a heretic, when you are changing from the business as usual path, when you have a different idea, it's not usually a comfortable place so, you know, in, in society because people, you know, um, point you out as, a, as, a, as an outsider, as somebody going off in, or in a crazy direction. Um, and that's us, right? I mean, mostly the people who have come to this kind of a conference would be that kind of people. And I guess I'm thinking if you look from the perspective of 100 years in the future and you look back now, you'll see that the people who want to carry on with business as usual, who, who that's the way they want to go, will actually be irrelevant in a hundred years time. From the perspective of history, the people who say, no, we have to actually take care of things, we have to go in a different direction, will be where we are then. 
and the people who now you're trying to convince, you're trying to get them to, to understand what you want to do, they actually will be irrelevant from the historical perspective. Now, I don't know if that's a, a crazy idea or if it helps at all, but that's sort of the way I look at it. Because this, it is a bit of a struggle to go off in a different direction. And what the rest of my talk is about is about that direction. What does it look like? Um, energy is where we're going to start. Transportation, why? Because a lot of what we need to change is the impact we're having. And where is the impact coming from? It's coming from burning fossil fuels. And it's coming from the way we move ourselves around. So burning the fossil fuels for the processing we, we do, for the, um, for the energy that, that we use, and, and how we move ourselves around. These are massive changes that are required in those areas. And if you think about, um, okay, well, what are those changes? What, is the, what do those look like? What, what pops into your head? In a hundred years perspective, looking back, what is it about the way that, that we are going in a new direction that exemplifies this turning point. Solar panels, wind turbines, marine energy, biofuels. Okay, I have a bit of heresy for you. No. In a hundred years time, looking back and saying, what was the idea? What was the seminal point of difference that has taken us in a different direction where now we have the chance to be sustainable? We can reduce our, you know, the impacts are now controlled. It's because we had an idea, and that idea was that we have enough. That's the heresy. Do you know where, what the word heresy means? It comes from the Greek thinker. And yeah, sometimes if you actually think, that makes you a heretic. Because you don't just follow along with, the, with the, the standard way of doing things. But it's time to think. And what is at the root of what's wrong with how we use energy? It's that we always think we need more. We right now use more than any human beings ever in the whole you know, concept of human beings. <laughs> we use so much energy. Every other human being who's ever lived on this planet has used less than us. For us to think that we need more is some sort of insanity. We don't need more. 40 years ago, people used half of what we use. They thought they needed more, they got more, and look where we are. They weren't, they weren't hurting, they were fine. Can you understand the heresy of this concept that we do not need more? Try explaining that to Meridian. There's a very nice river on the west coast, but you know, we don't really need more. That's a crazy idea. How about this idea? We can share what we have. Is that a communist idea? Is that something people are going to throw rocks at us for? Maybe. But it's just a concept that we can actually share what we have. We have enough, and there's enough to go around. And if we used less, it would be okay. And yet, that is the direction that we're going in. Transportation, here's a heresy for you. We can move ourselves. You know, you think about going somewhere. Um, okay, well, how am I going to get there? What is going to move me there? And yet, we can move ourselves. Um, people can get out of their cars. We do not need any more roads. We actually have enough. All of the roads that we will ever need have now been built. The question is, which ones will we maintain and which ones will we let go, actually? Well, why not? We really don't have the bitumen to build more roads. It, it, we, we have enough. We, we've peaked in road building. Now we have to maintain what we've got. What about money? Money is man-made. It's actually all right here. It's an idea. Money is an idea. We use it. We don't live for it. We live for our children. We live for beautiful sunrises. We do not live for money. Yeah, it seems like there are people who do. And they go in the direction that they go in. But if there is a change of direction, it's a change that understands the actual role of money. And it's a role that lets us communicate value between each other in a way that is tradable. 
but we can meet in the market face to face. It isn't all just a credit card world there in that other direction. And in business, ethical and fair as a root, not as a nice marketing ploy at the end. Ethical and fair in the business plan. There's an idea. And how about in business and industry expressing um, and nurturing cultural values? Not just turning a profit for the investors. Yes, turning a profit, but not just turning a profit. Actually having an ethics and a value in the whole business plan. That's the other direction. How about health? Care is a human thing. It's not a pill. And it's not an MRI. Those are, those are tools of health care. But health care is a human thing. It's just a different direction. Cities. When I walk through my neighborhood, I sometimes think if I took a ruler, you know, a, 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 a tape measure, and I measured up the space in my neighborhood that is dedicated to vehicles, where humans really have to watch out for themselves, where they're in danger, where you can't let your children go, where you can't let your pets go, the places where ducks end up flat, you know, where the wildlife has to watch out. If I were to measure up that space and look at it as a proportion of the total space, and then to think of that space as actually that is our space. This is land. It's useful land. If we started thinking of the space in our cities as human space belonging to us, we might be able to create amazing things out of it.